Presidential candidate of the New Nigeria People's Party, NNPP, Rabi Kwankwaso, has said his party was offering a golden opportunity to Peter Albi, standard bearer of the Labour Party, to be his running mate. Now, Kwankwaso, who stated this after inaugurating the state office of the NNPC, NNPP, I beg your pardon, in Gombe State, said if he became the running mate of to Obi, the NNPP would collapse. Well, joining us to discuss this is Achike Chude. Uh, we, uh, he's a political analyst, and Tunji Abdulhamid is a legal practitioner. Thank you so much, gentlemen, for joining us. It's a pleasure. Thank you for having me. So this issue has been lingering for weeks and weeks. First, there were speculations that there were talks between the NNPP and the Labour Party presidential flag bearers. And then, from r rumors, we it got to a real conversation that they were in talks. I remember talking with the spokesperson of the Labour Party on this show, and he did say that they were having talks. And my first question was, to what end will these talks be? Uh, do we see anybody leaving his party to the other? Being that, Boy Peter Albi, his followers want him to be the president. For Kwankwaso, his followers also want him to be the president. And so I ask, now that Mr. Kwankwaso is telling Dr. Obi that he needs to join his party and be his running mate, what do you think this means for both parties? I'll start with you, Mr. Chude. Well, I, I read um, Kwankwaso's uh, speech uh, or, this, or his statement where he talked about uh, um, the strategy and all the things that are coming to taking a political decision like this. He also talked about uh, the position of the Southeast in the order of things and said that, um, in his opinion, the Southeast is, uh, is, is the last on the, ladder when it, on the ladder when it comes to playing politics. Uh, but then the question I would ask before even getting to the issue is if, if uh, they are the ones that are first in politics, if they are the ones that understand the nuances of politics, you know, then I, I should say, really, that uh, the people who have held politics, I mean, the political realm of this country for about 60 years after independence, should be ashamed of themselves. Because what you ask, what you're looking at is what has come out of it, the outcome of their dexterity, political dexterity and political acumen in a country that is suffering gross insecurity, in a country you know, that has suffered a lot of downturn at the economic level, in a country that is rife with corruption. So it means, again, that the politics of the experienced politician, the politics of uh, those people who understand the nuances of politics according to Paul Kwasu, is wrong, and that it has not worked for this country. And if that is the case, then Kwame Kwasu himself is making a statement, a case, for somebody that is different you know, from them. But beyond that, again, is the fact that Shortly before Peter Tobi left the PDP, if he had gotten into a discussion for, you know, a merger with, you know, or to join the NNPP, I think it would have made more sense for him to run as Kwankwaso's vice presidential candidate. Because at that particular point in time, yes, Peter Tobi was fairly known, but not as, as, as well known as visible as he is today. So I would say, since politics is also about visibility, that Peter Obi right now, currently, has become a phenomenon. And a lot of us don't seem to understand what is happening around Peter Obi. Even he cannot say that he understands what is happening around himself. That the movement that we see today is a movement that is bigger than Peter Obi. Therefore, if you are talking about who would run as a vice presidential candidate of maybe one, you know, one another, that person should be quite so the person that is that, that, that is not as visible, has not been able to achieve the kind of visibility that P2B has been able to achieve. And so if he wants to run a loan, uh, you, you know, the, the tendency is that he's not going to get anywhere. And neither am I saying that P2B, if he runs a loan, you know, without Kwankwaso, would achieve the presidency of this country. But we believe me right now, as it stand, he's in a much better position than Kwankwaso is. Hmm. Um. Let me come to you, uh, uh, Tunji. The PTRB um, support network has said that the former governor uh, will not negotiate his presidential ambition with anybody, even for a vice president slot, contrary uh, to some media reports, because there had been rounds that oh, he might just deputize Ikwankwaso because people are thinking that this merger 
would be what the third force needs to upstage the two main opposition parties. But now we're seeing that that might not necessarily be the case. Now a congressman is coming out to say, well, it's a golden ticket of sorts. But let's look at the structure and the base that, I mean, just like uh, uh, Chikichude has said, there is something happening around Peter B that is maybe even bigger than he expected. But looking at these two mergers, could also could Kwankwaso also be looking at it not necessarily from a political angle, but from uh, a place of, um, let's say, strength? How much power and prowess does he come with if he were to be wooing a Peter B? Um, does he stand a chance whatsoever? I think uh, the alliance between the uh, between Tonkasu and uh, Obi, I know from the start that, that so they have a different uh, uh, political, political uh, position. Tonkasu left PPP not because of anything, because he's aware that he will not be able to win the ticket and he wants to do it that better. It's difficult or, or impossible for anybody to see, to expect that Tonkasu will want to be running it, particularly to Obi, with, with, with due respect. Politically, Tonkasu will see himself as a more uh, stronger person than the uh, OB, he sees himself as more on ground than OB politically in terms of uh, having been a uh, two-time governor, having been senator, having been Yeah, I'm curious. When, when, when you say being on ground, um, the, there's a Kwankwasia movement, which is mostly in Kanu and a few, you know, pockets around mm -hmm. the north. Um, but what is that spread? Is that... Is that what you translate as being on ground? No, I mean, I, same I, can I'm be said for Peter Abi, but I'm wondering. I'm, I'm not saying that's what he did now. I'm saying he will see himself as more on ground than uh, compared to Obi. I'm talking about complex now. He sees himself as I am bigger than Obi in politics. So I can't be seen to be deputy for Obi. So, notwithstanding that, he has a corporate movement that has been on ground for God. Obi is just coming up with the movement. And the movement has not even, as far as I'm concerned, they've not, they are not, they've not started right. This is the first time they are, they are coming up with the supporting Obi. They, they may be, may be strong, may be, may, they may be who are willingly doing their, 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 their support. But notwithstanding that, we're talking about politics. You know, there are so many issues in politics that Peter, that will not make a bank council see himself to be the deputy to so what's it called? So Peter will be, he will believe that look, being deputy to Peter will be, is like it for him. To him. I'm talking about him. The linguistic is that instead, you know uh, uh, where he, he belongs to now. And again, you see this alliance between Labour and the uh, MPP, you figure that the way we are looking at it. We are only looking at Concato and OB alone. You know, what happened to other members of the party who are contesting for partnership? What happened to other members of the NMPP LFP who are contesting for out of rep, Senate? Uh, uh, out of assembly, how would they do their own? What will happen? Their own, uh, how would they do it? So we are just looking, there will be a lot of right, when that, that, even if it happens, because we, we, are you going to say all the people under NMPP who are contesting for Senate or governorship or whatever to now move to uh, uh, Labour Party or those or five factor, those in Labour Party who are contesting for Senate or uh, or whatever to now be a member of NMPP because you cannot contest on that two party. There must be one party. The two of them was mad. Except you are going to say it's only about only Obi and Pankasu, and that what Obi and Pankasu, what Obi at least, all the other party, all the other members yeah, of the Labour Party, mm. and a member, automatically member of uh, uh, NMPP. Or once Pankasu at least, all members of the uh, uh, NMPP, automatically a member of NMPP. It will not be, it will not be possible because people have won election to be to contest for governorship, people have won election to contest out of NEP, people have won election to contest in under both uh, the NMPP and the NMPP. Why are we giving up to, to, to a place? They won't know where to go. So it's, I think the, the, I have seen that the, the, the alliance will not work. It will not work. There's no way to go. I know. But apart from being, apart from Pankato, see himself are more, uh, uh, more bigger than the uh, B. I'm, I'm talking about uh, the way he now. Yeah, I, the, apart from that, it, there's no way the, the other so, the, the issue that I have raised will not uh, uh, bring them down. Except they will, they will be safe and say, I'll, I'll only think about myself. Once I'm okay, then what I don't think about what I don't care about what other people are, 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 are facing. Check that, that, and that would be difficult for it. But it will be difficult to do that. But you see, I don't, I'm not expect one person of that caliber. 
to say what he said on national TV. To, to say that, look, if he is not a, if, uh, if, if uh, OB becomes the presidential candidate of, of, of the party, people from the North will not vote for him. That is not a nationalistic uh, statement. Mm. So that when you become, you, 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 are, you are pandering to what we call the patient, believing that, look, certain part of the country are. Uh, uh, ethnic, uh, are uh, uh, voting based on ethnic uh, 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 basis, which I, I don't know, I'm not totally agree with. So okay. I, I do not expect a person of the Taliban, a, a, people, a person of the quality in quality, to so say certain things that he said on that uh, internet. It, it, it belittles uh, what uh, it, it's a standard, that's a concern. And it shows that if you want to a president, you will be a, a sentimental uh, and uh, uh, ethnic uh, uh, president. Interesting. Back to you, Achike. Um, is this a more of a play and show of selfishness or selfishness at, at play as opposed to what should have been the end game, which is building a third force, rescuing Nigeria and giving us something new? Now, don't forget, um, the NNPP came about as a movement of sorts that was supposedly the third force. The Labour Party, on the other hand, also came to being as a merger of a third force, a movement that was also supposedly that party or movement that would be able to save Nigeria, in quote, from the major political parties who have been leading us over time. Does this mean that there is going to be a crash and burn of the third force, whichever one it might be? No, no. Well, again, the, the use of uh, I, I do not think there is a conscious effort. Yes, people have been talking about the third force and so but. I do not think that people have been, there has been a conscious effort to exactly build a third force. But I think what has happened is that uh, there has been a conscious effort to build another political party that will be able to rival the PDP and the AP and possibly take power away from them. If you call it a third force, that is okay. You know, and, and of course, we know that um, what Labour has done, one must, one must give them kudos. Labour is not yet complete in terms of uh, uh, you, you know, you know, this is not the first time Labour is is having, a, you know, the Labour Party is making an incursion into the politics of Nigeria. Mm. They had done it, you know, some years back when Mimiko became governor of those states on the back of uh, on the platform of uh, the Labour Party. But that is not the kind of Labour Party that a lot of Nigerians desired, especially the working class people desired. And I'm also not saying that that is that we have exactly arrived at having that kind of a Labour Party. But this is a step in the right, you know, uh, uh, direction. So when it comes to uh, the issue of, um, you know, Kwanquas and Pitobi, I think it's about idealism and pragmatism. Uh, Kwanquas is being idealistic because, you know, he sees himself as the bigger, the more accomplished politician. So why would he give way? And I agree with uh, my, my, my colleague over there. So why would he give way to Pitobi that he might be regarded as a new fight? But the reality is that this new fight is bigger than him politically. And so when you talk about even the Kwankwasia movement, which is a formidable movement, but only in Kano. And if, if the Kwankwasia movement is, is, uh, is more, it also has some level of influence, it will be minimal in other parts of the North. But the bastion of the Kwankwasia movement is in Kano. So outside of Kano, they are nowhere. So what do you have with P2B? Why is everybody talking about P2B? Why is everybody critical of P2B? Even the political parties that say that tell you that P2B is going nowhere are, are still, you know, talking about him. If he was not popular, if he was not a danger, you know, to the other political parties, the two big political parties, the APP and PDP, they won't be talking about him. There is something, something tells them that there is a problem. And we have seen movements like this, you know, uh, 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 um, become something much bigger. You know, even than, than they were when they were formed, and we have seen such movement enter government house. You know, taking the presidency of a, of, of 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 the countries where they, they, they were born. You talk about Tunisia and a few other places in even in Europe, in this Spain also. We have had such things happen, and so that is why everybody is worried because you see, for instance, even with what is happening on Twitter and social media, where people are now beginning to. Accuse the P2B supporters of being unruly and the rest. And you laugh 
Because this is what there is nothing they are doing that has not been done, that was not done by the other political parties. But what has happened is that this space has been taken over by the younger generation of Nigerians who are tired, who are frustrated, who are angry, and who are disillusioned about the state of their country. And so they want something, a movement forward. And so remaining with what you have with the PDP and the APC is the same, is the same of, of the same. You know, the two political gladiators of, of, of the past. You know, and so people are tired of the old guard because they believe that the old guard have nothing to give. You know, and that is the beauty of the of the movement around you know uh, uh, Peter B, and that makes him formidable. That makes him dangerous. Obviously, if there could be a few problems in parts of the north, but not all parts of the north, not central, with what we are seeing with you, you, you know, uh, and then of course the, the south, south, and the southeast is also there for the picking. Even southwest is going to take obviously some. Some, some major votes in the Southwest, especially depending on the kind of politics that Tinubu and the APC are able to play with regards to the, uh, the, the choice of a vice presidential candidate. Okay. If, if, if it happens that Tinubu actually decides that his fortune, political fortune will be best guaranteed with a, not, with a Muslim Muslim ticket, then you are going to definitely have repercussions from even the Southwest, that is the home the home of Tinubu himself, because people are going to react. And why, why is it happening? It's unfortunate that, that we find ourselves in that situation. But the political class in this country has divided Nigeria in ways that, that even the, we did not see, even under the military dispensation. So mm -hmm. when you introduce you know, a, a, a Muslim Muslim ticket or a Christian Christian ticket, you're also going to get a back a backlash. And we're going to see that backlash okay. depending on what Tinobu does. And that will end up playing a bit of business to some wow. extent. All right, finally, um, uh, before we wrap up, um, Tunji, what are the options? Are the other options open to looking? It looks like this marriage between Kwan Koso and Obi may never happen. It looks like something that's dead on arrival. And so going forward, what are the other options that, that might be open to Peter Obi to make him have an edge of sorts uh, and bring him back powerfully into the game? I, I think uh, I am not, uh, I, I will tell you, this. if 2023 election, Obi may not be able to get a ticket much, uh, particularly in the north, because the, the only people who are shouting uh, obedient, 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 the south, the south. The, and the, cannot, there's no way you can become a president of Nigeria Without having to face, because you first have 25% of uh, at least for the part of the state of the country. So I, I doubt, just like Kwan Kwan, will not be able to make an inroad into the south, particularly the southeast and south, uh, south south. It will be the same thing to apply to OB, because may not be able to take much inroad into the north. Because I, not, I, 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 so you're saying that there is no the, other candidate, there's no Trump card that a, a Peter OB can pull. I mean, I'm, I don't want to name names, but I'm wondering, there is no trump card that he can pick that would make him have that inroad into the North, especially. You see, you see it's, a, it's, a, it's a bit late now. It's a bit late now. It's a bit late now. It's a bit late. It's a bit late. It's a bit late. It has been done earlier. The, 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 the major or the alliance or the, have been done before now. Before even the primary of all the parties. Maybe it, it, for now, it will be, be difficult. Are you going to say those who have got one, uh, one the ticket of their, of their, of their party? To, to, to drop their candidacy because of just one, uh, the one person? Are you going to say they all have to now uh, leave their own uh, and support their Peter Obi in that way? So it's a big thing, apart from concern. Maybe they right. should be working towards uh, 2027, but, but it's been another platform for him to at least announce himself. But if they can maintain the momentum, probably in 2027, he may have that uh, chance. But I, I'm telling you, my own reality, okay. Obi may not uh, make a, he may make, he may not make a, he may not be able to make a proper state. All right. Particularly because you see, in politics, that's all constructive. The structure is not there. I am aware you say that people are in structure. Okay. The structure I'm talking about here are people that work for him, people that will do the thing without the uh, 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 basics. I, I think without that, maybe they may go for it. Okay, well, we got to go. And that's it on the show. I want to say thank you. Achike Chude is a political analyst. Tinji Abdulhamid is a legal practitioner. We keep our fingers crossed and keep our eyes on the stories as they develop. Thank you so much, gentlemen, for being part of the conversation. It's my pleasure. Thank, Thank you. you. All right. My pleasure. Thank you all for staying with us and enjoying the conversation tonight. I am Mary Anakon. We'll be back tomorrow talking still for development and looking at the biggest stories in our political scene. Have a good night.